forms a bridge between the mass of an object and the number of particles that are found there. And so let's say we take carbon dioxide, for example. It's going to be found in the air. You breathe it out. Um, its atomic mass unit is going to be the mass of each of the individual atoms. And so we have one carbon, so we could look on the periodic table, and the atomic mass of that is 12.01. And then we're going to add two oxygens. Each of those are 16, and on the periodic table we could find it here. And so its atomic mass unit of carbon dioxide is going to be 44.01. One mole of carbon dioxide then is going to weigh 44.01 grams. All right, follow me here. One mole of carbon-12 contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms and weighs 12 grams, right? So one mole of oxygen also contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, but because oxygen atoms are more massive, it weighs 16 grams. And you'll recall that oxygen's relative atomic mass is 16 AMUs. The number of atoms per mole remains the same, but the mass of a mole depends on the average mass of the element. This simply means that one mole of any element equals its relative atomic mass in grams. So now you got it, one mole of hydrogen weighs 1.008 grams, a mole of iron is 55.85 grams, and a mole of natural carbon is 12.01 grams. This is known as an element's molar mass.